welcome welcome back lads to another dauntless video and today today heroic escalation guide number two yes i know it's the last one of the heroic escalations in round sense but obviously i didn't get around to doing uh, actual proper uh, heroic escalation guides for the blaze one and the shock one so today is my second one uploading the sh uh, terror escalation heroic escalation guide um, and I've noticed a couple of trends already since I have cleared them all apart from the shock escalation and that is I'm going to repeat myself from the last video and that is and that is do not use your potions on round one this is like actually I'm going to say it a meta way to complete the heroic escalations just saving your potions uh, on round one is just a huge benefit just because when you are fighting the first behemoth, it, you are, it is isolated. There isn't much to worry about. And if you do get a behemoth which you don't want to fight, or if you do die, you can just reset. So just taking your time with the first behemoth and just letting the fight be as long as possible. As long as you do clear the first behemoth without dying, in my opinion, um, that's a good start. Um, it doesn't matter how long it takes. So yes, definitely, definitely don't worry about using your potions for the first round yes i know it's tedious yes i know it can be long and that's why i'm gonna fast forward this in just a second but yes guys do not use your potions on round one i had to get that out of the way first but guys if you are new to the channel definitely consider leaving this video a like because we do dauntless content like this every single week i'm back on my grind and if you like content like this definitely consider leaving it a subscription because you know we will be covering the other escalations as they come out and if there is any other changes i will bring out different builds and i'm hoping to do different builds for every heroic escalation every time it comes around so next time we get terror escalation i'm going to do a different build not just chain blades but this rotation obviously it's the first rotation of heroic escalations i thought i'm going to focus on chain blades just because they are the most i don't know the best dps bang for your buck if you are trying to stay alive i think you can get a lot of iframes in terms of dodging the behemoth i don't think you need to worry about dodging too much just because you do have that reaper stance in your back pocket at 9.9 percent .9 of the time so that's why i'm choosing chain blades before you guys start getting annoyed saying like why don't you use anything apart from chain blades i'm just doing it just so everyone can get a an idea that you can clear these uh, escalations with ease and i think chain blades are the best way to do things but without, yap uh, without me yapping on, um, the build for this video will be right in front of you right now. I will also leave the link in the description below if you want to follow the build out for yourself. Um, it actually has galvanized in it. I wanted to make the build a little different. Um, I wanted to add in this cell because I don't think it's used a lot. And I think it has its place in certain builds. And I think it actually has a certain place in this escalation. So... Yeah, as you are aware, Terra Escalation uh, is a lot of poison. There can be a lot of poison, especially against Agarus. We will get to that in a second. Um, but yeah, having shield in its escalation is a must-have. And when I first had Terra Escalation, without not even just Heroic, um, I was focusing on shield build. So Galvanize is definitely, definitely a good option with Bastion. Um, but also, moving on to the amp choice, VI, obviously, obviously, if you can get it, and if you can get as lucky as me as and to get it on the first round, you will be set for the rest of the escalation. You've got enough damage boost there, even though it hasn't, even though it hasn't got a huge, huge um, amount of damage as it used to because it got nerfed, it still has a decent chunk, and you are passively doing damage to the dual behemoths when you're fighting them on rounds two and round four at the same time. You will see my round four in a moment with uh, Panga and the Terra Quill Shot. Terra Quill Shot? Terra Charog, sorry. And I only need to use one potion for that whole round. So yeah, VI, definitely choose VI. If not, make sure you are going to your escalation tree and choosing the shock escalation amps so you can get the critical dominion or any of the critical damage ones. Anything to boost your damage is beneficial in my opinion. Also, if you get Torrent Shield, I suggest going for that as well. I think that is a must-have for this Escalation, just because when you get to Agoras, Agoras, whatever you want to call it, I think it zaps away your shield or your health too much when you're in the poison, and just having the Torrent Shield at ease is a really, really good option. You guys have probably noticed as well, um, we have Blitz, Frenzy, and Pylon. I'm actually using the first Pylon on this zone, 
and I'm going to also be using my remaining two pylons against Agoras just so you can get a nice chunk of damage. Because this build has Uthric Attainment level 3, I thought there's no point in me running the Aether Drive Tonic. I thought why not just use Pylong. Also just because Agoras stands still, I think it's nice just you, you, you get quite a lot of uptime on the Pylon. So I think Pylon this week is actually a really, really good option for Agoras. It does get his health down pretty, pretty quickly. I don't think he has that much health in my opinion anyway. So yeah, definitely run Blitz Frenzy and Pylon this week. Use your first Pylon in round two. And then one pot as well in round two. Use one pot in round three. One uh, one pot to two pots in round four. If you can get lucky, uh, just use one. But two is perfectly fine. Because if you do follow this graph, you will, hmm, you will have two for Agoras. So that's really, really good. I actually had three and I had one spare at the end of the fight. So... If you, you can get lucky and you can actually have spare potions, so potions should not be an option, um, shouldn't be a problem this week because I think Frax was a bit of a pain just because of the health, but Agoras hasn't actually got that much HP in my opinion, so as long as you can just stay away from his poison, keeping two to three potions for him is definitely, definitely enough. Uh, some tips for round two as well, try and focus the Behemoth which has the, which is Terra because obviously we have a shock element weapon. If there wasn't one, just like my round here, we had an Ember Main and a Rift Stalker. Just go for the one with the lower HP. I went for Ember Main, obviously because of the lower HP. Also, if there's an option for a Behemoth with more boops, definitely go for that because there is a plus three overpower in this build. So obviously, the more boops you can get, the more damage you can get, and the more benefit, <laughs> the more uptime on your pylons will go into overpower as well, meaning more damage in the long run. So definitely go for those Behemoths anyway. The perfect situation would obviously have a Terra, Terra Ember main, allowing you to get the first boop off and then get in the second boop. And then after the second boop, it should be around half health. But that's obviously in the perfect world. Just focus on the boop heavy behemoths or the weak to electric element. As I, as I already mentioned, go for Torrent Shield whenever you see it. I genuinely, genuinely would go for Torrent Shield over VI this week. I was very close to choosing Executioner, because Executioner is a really good option, by the way. Definitely choose that for uh, if there is another, if there isn't other, any other options. But your main focus is, like I said before, would be Torrent Shield and VI. Mm, it's up to you if you want to go for VI over Torrent Shield. Damage is really, really nice. I guess Torrent Shield is more common than VI, but personally, I think having the shield on tap is just more beneficial to you in sustaining live. If you think you can survive and and then you, and you've actually got a choice between VI and Torrent Shield, mm, go for VI. Um, it's just whatever you feel more comfortable with. Obviously, make sure you're using your Malkarian dash between rounds and Behemoths, especially on the dual rounds. After you've killed the first Behemoth, use another Malkarian dash. So you can get that shot proc as early as possible. Uh, third round behemoths are always the long, uh, always tough as well. Can be as tough as the first round, but you are potting, so it shouldn't take as long as the first round. And um, but once again, same as last video, we get a scorched on hellion in round three, which is an absolute stonks. It is a pain. You are constantly in the fire, and it just drags the whole escalation out even further. But please, please do not use any more than one potion on round three. Do not urge to do it. You will get through it. Just grind and play safe. There is no need for it. You will definitely, definitely eventually get through the third round. When you do eventually get through the third round and you'll have a choice out of remaining amps with either Shield Spear, uh, Pack to Swiftness, Executioner, all these ones, I would go for either Shield Spear or Executioner, definitely. Pack to Swiftness is too much of a dodgy call, especially you can get one hit even with the full galvanized um, 
shield or have tested it, you can get one tapped. And also, especially when you one day have poisoning, I'd, I just wouldn't risk using Pact of Swiftness if you want to make sure you do stay alive. But once again, in round four, make sure you are focusing the Terra Behemoth, which is weak to Electric. We got the Terra Charog, just keep focusing him. Another hot mention as well with this build. Also, if you are in the position to hit the tail, go for it. You will do more damage and that will help you in the long run. But obviously, when you're doing these dual behemoth fights, you want to position yourself where obviously the other behemoth you're not fighting can't hit you. So do try and position yourself. <laughs> I got a lucky boop there. Where the other behemoth can't touch you as you are right now. Pangar is behind Charog and that's where you perfectly want him. I actually got really, really, really lucky with this fight. Charog literally did nothing. He just stood there for the majority of the fight, allowing me to attack him. Uh, meaning I actually didn't have to repot. I, I actually got free both of these behemoths on uh, one potion, which is actually really, really good considering the fourth round is supposed to be really difficult. Um, also, I got Pangar, which is also not a very difficult fight. So just pray to the RNG god you don't get anything harder, like a Scrave or something, because that is a pain to fight in these later rounds. Um, but yes, if there wasn't a Terra monster, go for the boot heavy one. Pangar probably would have been a good choice to go for at the beginning anyway. He hasn't got that much HP. Go for those leg breaks and you will get through this round with ease. You also want to make sure you are dodging most attacks to keep your galvanized up. I haven't mentioned that yet. But the more shields you have, the better critical chance and critical damage you will do via galvanized. When you are finally through that last round before Agarus, you want to be looking for either Full Throttle, uh, Executioner, these sort of types of amps if you haven't already got them, uh, Shield Sphere if you haven't already got it, um, but I do think the Full Throttle was really, really nice for that crit chance. But yes, make sure you are waiting here for his legs to stop moving. Pot up then when you see the arm slam down. Go to him and put your first pylon on the floor and just focus his stalk, really. And um, you'll get quite a lot of uptime on the pylon at the beginning of the fight. Make sure you dodge this first, first move because he will always do that with his little tr uh, with his trunks and you will get stuck and you will lose time and damage. So keep going for that um, trunk. He, you, you'll be able to stay there for quite a long time until he does this move. After that, just switch to his arm. The whole point of this fight is to try and stay out the poison as much as possible. Um, you will go down from full shield to zero health very, very quickly, as you can see right now. I didn't purposely die, um, but when I was at this HP, I was testing to see if I could stay alive, but I couldn't. I ran out of uh, potions. <laughs> so you will die. Yes, you will. Um, at this point, just once again, just try and find a position where he, there's no poisoning on him. Ideally the trunk, because you've already got a lot of damage on him. But to be honest, just go to any point with no poison. That's the most critical thing right now uh, also pylon uh, put your second one down if you haven't already because it obviously would have moved by now and um, you shouldn't have any left because you already used one in round two watch out for that move uh, as always and yes just keep staying at that poison as much as you can hold your um your hold ability for when you actually need to regen your shield torrent shield can come in really clutch with agarus this is why i'm telling you now hold on to your holds do not spam your holds this is why we're not running Aether Drive Tonic as well, because we don't want to be spamming it. We want to be holding it when we need it. <laughs> One hit can take you down a lot of health as well, so just be careful of that. Um, if you are finding yourself low with no uh, potions, just start attacking it or do this move. You will go up to a nice chunk of HP with a nice bit of shield. Uh, around this time as well, you will be looking to repot. Um, I thought, okay, I'm going to need both potions, but actually you don't. He hasn't got that much health, honestly. Trust me, when you start breaking the parts one by one, you'll get quite a lot of overtime up, <laughs> over overpower uptime, and he will, trust me, he will die out of nowhere. Um, I'm going to leave you with the rest of the fight. Thank you very much for watching. I've spoke for almost 15 minutes. I know it's been a long one, but guys, have a nice day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.